All right, so our final unit in CAT this semester is going to be on logarithms. We're just going to talk about the basics of logarithms to start. Um, so if we have log with a base of a of x, and that we'll just say that's equal to y, we would say that as log base a of x is equal to y where a, x, and y would normally all be values, numbers. Um, and the biggest thing that I want you to take away from this is if we were to switch this into exponential form, we would see that this is our base. So a would be our base. This would be our base. This is our base for our log also. Um, and then our y is our exponent. And that was written down here, so it's how our y is our exponent. And that would be equal to x. So the thing that I want you to pull away from this is that logs are equal to exponents. Because this is our exponent if this is in exponential form. So this equation is in log form. Using the same three pieces, this is in exponential form. So we're going to look at some real examples here. Hopefully allow you to switch forms pretty easily. So our first one, um, we see log base 4 of 1024 is equal to 5. And I want to change that from a log form into exponential form. I'm going to look at that base of 4. Raise that to the fifth power because logs are equal to exponents. We'll set that equal to 1024. Now you can check that on your calculator. 4 to the fifth power is 1024. So if you weren't sure, you can always check that, see if you got the right order. Because if you tried 5 to the fourth power, that would not be 1024. So you want to make sure that those work. Um, next one, if we have log base 5 of 1 fifth is equal to negative 1. And so let's change that into exponential form. We've got uh, base is 5, so that's exponential. 5 is our base. Logs are equal to exponents. So our exponent here is going to be negative 1, and then that's equal to 1 fifth. And that makes sense because anything with a negative exponent is going to move that term to the denominator. All right, let's take a look at the other way if we want to change exponential form into log form. Now, this is going to sound silly, but the most important thing to remember is that if you're switching from exp exponential form into log form, that you have the word log in your equation. So if I start, um, let's start with 3 to the yth power is equal to 27. Well, I want to change this into log form, so I write this as log base 3. And that's the base of my exponential term. Um, I actually like to make the exponent part go the next thing I write, because if I know what my exponent is, I know logs are equal to exponents, which is y. And then that leaves my result of 27. Let's try another example. Um, if I have m to the teeth power equal to w, and I want to change that into log form, first off, I look at my term here of m is my base. Then I, my exponent is t, which leaves my w to go right in there. All right, so now we're going to take a look at some log properties. Okay, there's five properties that we're going to look at today. Um, and they work the same in log form as they do in natural log form. So we're going to look at both of those as well. So if we look at the properties of logs. There are th five properties we're going to look at. So the first one, we know um, that log, we're going to use a general form every time, and then we'll get into some examples. So log base a of 1 is equal to 0. How do we know that? Well, we can always change forms. And we know that because, I'm going to use the abbreviation because, um, our base is a, our base is a, our exponent, because logs are equal to exponents, is 0. And anything to the 0 power is always 1. So if you have a log of anything, any base of 1, your answer will always be 0. Because in exponential form, we know anything to the 0 power is 1. So since you can switch back and forth between log and exponential form, those rules are very similar for exponent rules as log rules. They are very much related. So if I have a log base a um, of a, so if the base matches my result here, that's going to equal 1. And that's going to come in handy. We're going to use that property a ton. We're going to change things so they, they, that becomes that property. And that's because anything to the first power is itself. So if we have a base of a, 
the exponent's one, it's going to be itself. So that's really nice. The third property that we want to know about logs, or we're going to use, is that if I have log base a of a to some exponent power, my solution will be that exponent power. Because what happens, oh, we're going to switch this into exponential form. Let's say that this was a number here, and then we needed to solve for that number. That number would be the answer. So if I have my base is a, as you can see here, my exponent is x, and it's going to equal that result of a to the x. So that rule holds true for both log and exponential form. Now this next rule, actually we're going to start it in, uh, in exponential form because it makes more sense in exponential form. So if I have a base of a, and I raise that to a power of log base a of, I think we're going to go with x. Yeah, x. So if my exponent on my base of a has the same base on the log as that base, then my result is actually going to be x. Now, the reason this works is because if I change this exponential equation into log form, this works because if I have a log base a, so here's my base, I know that logs are equal to exponents, so my result is the only thing left of x equals log base a of x. Oh, look at that, they're actually equal to each other. And my fifth property is actually called the one-to-one -one property. We're going to do a whole day on that a little later. But um, in this case, very simply, we can use it. Log base a of x is equal to log base a of y. So if the bases are the same, then we know that x and y have to be equal to each other. So if I have two things where two logs where the bases are the same, maybe this was a number and this is unknown, those two would have to be set equal to each other to be able to solve. So then we know that x is equal to y. We're going to take a look at a couple problems here that use these five properties. So make sure you've got those written down because we're going to refer back to them um, every once in a while for these next few problems. So my first example here, let's take a look at uh, log, example one, log base two, uh, 2 of 64. We want to solve this. So we're going to try to change 64 into something that has the base of 2 so we can use one of our properties. We all, our goal is always to get the base of our log to match the base of that term uh, whenever possible. So I'm going to need to change 64 into something. So if I change this into a log base 2 of 2 to the 6th power, as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 64. Then I see that my base matches, and so my result is just going to be 6. So that would actually use um, the fourth, uh, no, the, let's see what property was that. The third property, where your base matches, so your answer is just your exponent. Now, if that was a little confusing for you, you can always change forms and try to figure out what your solution is. So 2 is our base to the power we don't know is equal to 64. You can play around in your calculator a little bit and figure that out. But there is no way to take the x root of that to figure that out. You would, that's why we use logs, to solve for exponents. So in this case, you would figure out that x is equal to 6 because 2 to the 6th power is 64. All right, let's try another one. Our next example, uh, we've got log base 25 of 5 is equal to, well, we want to try to see if we can change 5 and anything with, with a base of 25. Actually not possible. So what we're going to do instead is just change forms. 25 to the what power gives us 5. Well, what's happening here to this 25 to get a 5, we're not dividing by 5. I know that's tempting to say. But what exponent could we give? There's no exponent that gives us an operation of division. But there is an exponent that will square root this. And so a square root exponent would be 1 half. So the square root of 25 is 5. So x has to be 1 half. Remember fractional exponents? Um, if you have fractional exponents, 1 half is equivalent to the square root, 1 third is a cube root, 1 fourth is a fourth root, etc. So we're going to use those uh, quite often here. All right, this next one, example 3. We've got a log base 7 of 1 over 49. And now I'd like you to try to change 49, 1 over 49 into something that has a base of 7. Because that's going to really help us. So hopefully you can come up with log base 7 of 1 over 7 squared. We still don't have those ma bases matching perfectly. 
So we're going to change this into log base 7 of 7 to the negative 2. Remember, if we move anything up to the numerator of a fraction, that changes it to a negative if you change levels of a fraction. If it was a negative up here, moved it down to be positive. If it's a negative down here, moved it up to be positive. But here, this is positive, moved it up. So now it's going to be a negative exponent. So we're using our property uh, if we have 7 and 7, those match that our answer is just negative 2. Now we're going to take a look at our next example. Hopefully this one's pretty easy for you. Log base 4 of 4 raised to the uh, negative 0 0.038 power. So just like this last one, if 4 is matching on our base of our log and our result here, and our answer is just negative 0 0.38. Next example, we're going to use a different property this time. So we're taking a look at log base 19 of 1. We know that anytime we have 1 here, our answer is always going to be 0. That was that first property we did. Because 19 to some power that equals 1, well, anything to the 0 power always equals 1. So x has to be 0. So that's why that one equals 0. And my last example, like this, example 6, if I have, let's see, 4, so this is that exponential one, with a uh, raised to the log base 4 of 3, and my answer here, these two will cancel out, leaving me with just 3 as a solution. That's that uh, fourth property there. All right, let's try to solve a few log equations or some unknowns. Let's do a few of these. So if we look at, let's see, how about log of base x of 81 is equal to 4. So we need to switch forms to solve, and then we're going to try to figure out what x is. So if I switch forms here, I've got x to the fourth power equals 81. The only way to undo a fourth power is to take the fourth root of it. Let's take the fourth root on both sides. And I get x is equal to 3. My next one here, log base 4 of x is equal to 3. I'm going to change form so that I can solve. So 4 to the third power equals x. And 4 to the third power is 64. This next one, log base 10, also known as common log. Let's just take a pause real quick and talk about this. So if I have log, log base 10 equal to 0, this is called common log, which is also, if you just see log of x with no base written, you can assume that the 10, the 10 is there. So if there's no base, then you would assume log has a base of 10. And you'll see that in our next unit as well, our next lesson as well. OK, so anyway, going back to this one, if we change forms, for this one, we have a base of 10 raised to the 0 power. So x has to be anything to the 0 power is 1. So x has to be 1. All right, one more, then we'll move on to natural log. So log base 2 of x is equal to log base 2 of 4. This is a real quick 1 to 1 property one. This is number the fifth property we just looked at. If we have the same base, then our two result pieces have to be the same. So x has to be equal to 4. All right. We're going to take a look at natural log. And natural log works exactly the same as regular log. So the properties are the same. The only difference is when we look at natural log, so natural log would have a base of e. Let's just say e to the x equal to y right now. Um, and so instead of writing natural log of e, because e could be confused as a variable, um, e is a number, it's a very similar to pi, 
uh, non-terminating, non-repeating decimal, uh, 2.72, I believe, is how that starts out. Um, so instead we write natural log of x equals y. So we know that this means that there's a base log with base of e. So we know that. So those properties, those five properties work the same. I have natural log of 1, it equals 0, because we have e to the 0 power, because e to the 0 power equals 1. So all these properties are going to work exactly the same. I have natural log of e, the base is match, because it has a base of e, of e, so that's going to equal 1. If I have natural log of e to the x, the base is match, so my answer is just x. These are all those same properties. If I have e to the natural log of x, again, those match. So my answer is x again. Um, and last one, if I have natural log of x is equal to natural log of y, then x equals y. So all those properties hold true for natural log as well. Um, so now we're going to do a couple natural log examples. So if I have natural log of e, just kidding, of 1 over e. I have natural log of 1 over e. Then I want to move this to the numerator. It's 1 natural log of e to the negative 1. So now my base matches. That's always my goal. Change those bases so they match. My answer is negative 1. Next thing I want to do, um, I'll take a look at natural log of e to the third power. This one's even, even simpler. We have those two that match. So we get a 3. Here's our fourth property, e raised to the natural log of 5. Since these two match with the same base, base here of e, base here of e, we get 5. And finally, let's just throw in a 1 to 1 property for good measure. So natural log of x plus 2 equals natural log of 10. So then if they both have the same base of e, we have x plus 2 is equal to 10, so x equals 8. So that's it.